Hello community, so great that you are back. We have some brand new AI research. Let's just jump into it. Welcome to the channel Discover AI. Let's have a look at the latest paper. Now we are going to talk about tool augmented AI agent reasoning today. And this is exactly where the agent now leverage external tools such as search engine, calculators, code interpreters, any API to extend the problem solving capacity beyond the inherent limitation of the parametric knowledge. Now, you know, we can broadly have this categorized into two different paradigms. The first is a multi-agent framework where we have multiple specialized agents with a distinct role and a distinct tool set, a set of tools that are defined and the agents are trained to collaborative, solve complex, predefined tasks. But on the other hand, we have the tool integrated reasoning models in general, that represent more or less an emergent paradigm that explicitly trains the GPT systems to incorporate tools usage into their pure reasoning process. So let's have a look at tier. Today's paper is a beautiful paper from Tsinghua University, the Huatong University of Science and Technology, National University of Singapore, and good old Carnegie Mellon University in the US. Beautiful. And they have now a new graph-based agent planning called GAP, a novel network that models here the inter-task dependency through a graph-based planning to enable now adaptive parallel and serial tool execution. Sounds like a mouthful, but it's rather easy. Imagine you have here multiple tools, multiple network, multiple interconnect, multiple logical dependencies in your complex human task. And now you ask simply, hey, if you, if I build now a network of the complexity of the query, and I can say, hey, how many tools here can I start in parallel? I don't want to wait here for the answer coming back. What are dependencies? What are not at all dependencies? How much I can parallelize here the complete exercise? This is it. Simple. Now, tool integrated reasoning, you know, they are more or less based or have been based on the React paradigm. So we have a simple think, act and observe pipeline with an end-to-end -end man. And this was, let's say for the last two years, our main paradigm. Yeah? However, you know, those tier methods are limited to sequential reasoning trajectories. And it was just that in my last video, a member video, where I showed you an alternative to this. Now here we approach here also another alternative. We have now a new approach to train here agent foundation models like GPT-5 or whatever you have to decompose the complex task into dependency aware subtask graph structures where we can now, an AI, autonomously determine which tool can be executed in parallel in this network. So simple. Now, if you go now to gap this graph-based agent planning paradigm, we now say, okay, so at first we have to perform a dependency aware planning phase. In this planning phase, the AI or maybe the human, let's have a look, has now the graph based reasoning process. So somehow we have to figure out if the human query, what are the dependencies for the planning process? And then if we have understood the logic, we can build a data set and then we can train our models, like say a 3 billion free trainable parameter model to reason over the task dependency graph. So we have, a, if you want, a senior teacher a student model where the student simply learns this execution independently and we have executing independent tools in parallel. So we have a speed up. This is it. You see, normally it was a task, you had a sequential task, you search for this, you have files, you generate in a video, and then you, now you say, okay, let's have a graph-based planning. So somehow some intelligence comes up now and says, okay, so this task I can decompose in, let's say, five subtasks. And now if I look at this five subtasks, which subtasks are dependent on other subtasks? For example, subtask one is here dependent on nobody. So Subtask 2 is also dependent on nobody, so why not start this in parallel? Then, maybe you have to wait with subtask 3 for the results of 1 and 2. Okay, so logic consequence, but you see parallel tool and agent calling is now the new paradigm. Let's do in parallel whatever we can do. Let's speed up everything. 
subtle execution in parallel. Beautiful. It is so simple. Now, what is not simple at all to train now such a model. Because the idea is one thing, but to train an AI model on this is a complete different thing. And they said, hey, to train our gap, we now start or we constructed here a high quality training data set with 7,000 graph based planning traces. Derived here from a question and answering benchmark, a multi hop benchmark, of course, we want to have a high complexity level. And now you might ask, but who was this intelligence who built those planning traces? Now, it turns out you ought to use GPT for Omni to synthesize the dependent error reasoning trajectories. So this is the first alarm goes off here and my brain says, oh my goodness. We use an AI with all the limitation of GPT for Omni to create here reasoning trajectory that are limited to the capacity of GPT for Omni. Sounds like centuries ago, such an old system, but okay. We want to understand the principle, what system we use is second order. And then we have the training strategy. If we created here the training data set, let's have the strategy and guess what? It's back to the roots. We only have supervised fine tuning on the created data set, followed by some reinforcement learning. And here the authors go with it. DAPO system. I have multiple videos on DAPO. And they said, okay, we have now a particular reward function on strategically sampled queries. Guess what? By an AI. And we provide now here maximum value back. Classical reinforcement learning. Now, the really interesting thing is how does the system now construct a complete, first run, task dependency graph during the planning phase? Now, the authors tell us we tried three different steps. At first, we have the subtask identification. Yeah? The model, the AI, GPT-4 Omni, analyzes here the input query, the human input query, and identifies now how many atomic subtasks can I build from this query, and how many subtasks are required to solve it. And then if I have 10 subtasks, what are the dependencies between those 10 subtasks? And now GPT-4 Omni reasons Quotation mark, careful, dangerous. It reasons about the dependencies between those subtasks by analyzing here the input output relationship and whatever is to the maximum capacity of GPT 4 Omni. And remember, this model was rather limited in its complex reasoning ability. So we will not got, get here a lot of high complexity subtask dependencies. But if we have them, guess what? We built the simplest graph we can think of. No? Based now on this dependency analysis, the model now constructs the dependency graph. G, graph theoretical model, 101, simple as hell, no problem at all. We have a dependency graph, you understand. And a primary graph, a primary task, like approach here, this Death Star. What are here the options? What are here the decomposed complexity? What are the specific tasks I can do? Risk analysis, dependency analysis, start everything to compute in parallel. So let's do this a little bit more in detail. Let's have a simple example. Let's say the example is, hey, what are the populations of the capitals of France and Germany? So the first, the subgraph, the subtask identification. Eh? And you say, okay, capital of France and the capital of Germany, guess what? At least we have maybe in the beginning two subtasks. Find the capital of France, subtask one, and find the capital of Germany, subtask two. Now, we know those are completely independent. No, you can kick off two agents simultaneously. So we can do this in parallel. What a nice idea. And then we have a dependency analysis. Because now, for example, search now for the population of S1, the capital of France. Now, this depends here clearly on the output of S1. Because, guess what? The capital of France could be Paris. So we have to wait till the system comes back with the solution the population of Paris. And then we just build a graph, simplest form, whatever you have, go with it. So first note, capital of France, capital of Germany, search population of S1, search population of S2. And so we build our graph dependencies. Simple. And then comes the real nice innovation, or let's call it a trick. Now you have to sort this. And what you do is you do a topological sorting on the simplest level. Because what you do, 
you just sort here on a graph to partition here the node into execution levels. Level 0, level 1, level up to k, whatever. And how we build those levels? Easy. L0 contains all the node with no incoming edges, so we have no dependencies. So this in our example would be S1 and S2. And then the next level contains the node that only depends on nodes in the very first level, where we have no dependencies. In our example, this would be S3 and S4, and you see how we built this topological sorting. And if we have this, we can say, hey, and now I can start a parallel execution. Because now the agent executes all subtasks within a single level in a parallel batch. So now we have found a solution. Let's go with maximum speed. Now, of course, I was looking a little bit deeper. Hey, how does a GPT system produce the traces? So here we have now the template of the GAP, GAP <laughs> framework for a particular um, uh, question-answer benchmark. So here's it. This is now our template. We have six functions. So we tell the AI, hey, listen, you have six functions. This is a description. You're allowed to think. You're allowed to plan. You're allowed to search. You have observation of the actions. You see, you observe what happened. Then you can reflect on it. Very similar to React. And then you produce an answer. For the execution, we are given the system now seven specific rules. So six functions, seven rules. Always use sync before other function. Use plan to create a task dependency graph. Execute independent task in parallel by using here a particular separator in the search. Use sync to synthesize and analyze the result from multiple searches. And you got it. And if you follow this template here, then the AI could generate here approximately 7,000 high quality, hopefully, training trajectories through the trajectory synthesis. And of course, at the end, you had a filtering mechanism for taking only the most quality stuff out of this. You see, such a simple idea, but we rely completely on the reasoning ability of this AI system that generates your 7,000 high quality training trajectories. It would have been so much nicer to have human expert that are domain expert in their field and really are yeah, verifiable. This is here just maybe some hallucination of a GPT-4 Omni system. But anyway, let's go with this. What are the results? What do we expect? I personally do not expect a lot of because it is all synthetic data from an old AI system. But anyway, let's have a look. On the x-axis, we have here the costs, if you want, in any currency. Never mind, it's just compare. So if you take here a QN 2.53b model, we are about here. We have an accuracy of about 10%, or somewhere in 10% level. And then we have a search R1. And then we have here our newly trained system with the newly trained, if you want, senior teacher, student, where we have a 3 billion system here as a student and was trained on this gap algorithm. Now you see the performance now after the supervised fine-tuning and after the reinforcement learning jumped on a particular data set now to close to almost up to 40%. Of course, we had an extensive post-training process, so of course it goes up. But now the main insight is that they tell us, hey, because of our training, we focused here primarily here on optimization, parallelization, speed. So therefore, we don't have waiting time. We have a low latency. The system does not have to wait for a complex process that takes, I don't know, a long time to wait. We have cost, but the cost go down. This is what this is telling us. No? The highest accuracy, where I see the accuracy is just a tiny little bit from some other 3B models, but anyway, that have also been trained on reinforced McLearning. But it is a little bit cheaper. Uh, always great to learn. Now, if you look at all the you know, benchmarks here, in total, you have to notice that GAP achieves only a 0.9% average performance improvement on multi-hop reasoning task. After all the training, after all the complexity, after all building here the training data set over state-of-the-art baselines. 
So it is not, I would argue, the performance jump because this is neglectable. But what is really nice, they say, yeah, at first the interaction turns to be reduced up to 33% and decrease the response length also close to a quarter. So, okay, if you really are in a hurry, but it depends so much here on the domain-specific training data set. Don't think that this is working for each and every domain that you can imagine. And that was not in the training set data set. It will not perform at all. Here you have the numeric. Here you have always here as the backbone of QN 2.53B instruct. And for this benchmark or for this benchmark, you see here the accuracy, length, time, cost, and the number of turns. Great. So whatever you do with this, I would say it is, for example, to this real close in the accuracy here, yeah, 0.9%, and yeah, you get the idea. Now let's come back here to the training itself. I think we can improve significantly if we just do not go here with this, if you want, teacher-student idea. But anyway, no? a powerful teacher model, GPT-4 omni-generated here, the perfect quotation mark dependency graph and the execution traces. If we would have a much better, higher performance system here, like GPT-5 Pro or whatever, I think we would have much better dependency graphs and better execution traces. Q3 is already out. Maybe you take any other 3 billion model that is particularly suitable here for a post-training exercise here for a smaller agent model. At first, supervised fine-tuning and then, you know, reinforcement learning. So it is just learning patterns. This small LLM is just learning patterns that this system here decided that this is the perfect dependency graph and this is the execution trace for the problem given to me in a particular knowledge domain. Now, the statement by the authors is quite um, strong. They say, hey, we demonstrate that the gap achieves a significant improvement, 0.9%, over traditional React baselines here in both accuracy and efficiency. Now, okay, doing here a lot of tasks that are not dependent on other subtasks in parallel is a big step forward. But given here the accuracy, the claims that it is accuracy, here significant improvement, I would be a little bit more careful regarding here the accuracy because it all depends, as I told you, on the GPT-4 Omni system and maybe not the best solution. Gap here really optimizes for speed, parallelization and efficiency, okay, of oh, advanced agents, but only if you can clearly and easily decompose the higher complexity into some lower complexity components that can be run in parallel then this is a, absolutely a speed improvement and so on. If you are not in the liquid position to have a clearly and easily complexity decomposition process that you already have a trained AI model on this and you have to maybe manually generate the training data set, then this is a very intense exercise. But nevertheless, if you have the training data, you can build your specific AI system for this, which has significant improvements. But for all the person who have here a channel membership here of my YouTube channel, in my last video where we talked about new solutions for AI agents, I've shown you, in my idea, a much better solution that is maybe not as fast, but can optimize here especially the robustness and the adaptability in face of uncertain higher complexities. But if you have a higher complexity, I would recommend you a little bit more advanced AI models, a new solution for AI agents. I know this was for members only. It has a higher complexity. It is not as easy to understand as GAP here, but I think it is more optimized for robustness and adaptability especially if you have to deal with a higher complexity in your domain knowledge. And I think this has a much more intelligent solution for your agent performance. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope there were some new interesting facts for you. Have a look at this. Maybe you want to subscribe. Maybe you become a member. Anyway, I hope to see you in my next video.